Welcome to MOOC course on introduction to proteogenomics. Today we are going to talk about next generation sequencing, sequencing by synthesis. In this session Dr. Arti Desai will give you a glimpse of base space sequence hub which is Illumina cloud computing environment to analyze the sequencing data set. She will mainly focus on how to search in public data, import data in personal dashboard and how to create your own project. Dr. Arti will also explain you about the sharing of data among users and how this hub is playing a big role in collaborative platforms. Finally, she will also show you how to launch an analysis in base space with the help of multiple software already available there. So, let us welcome Dr. Arti for today's lecture. So, now we can actually move on to Clicking on the link will take you to the BaseBase login page. Log in or create an account by clicking register now. This will give you instant access. The first time you log into BaseBase, you may need to read and accept the user agreement. After logging in, you will be taken to the Tumor Normal BaseBase project page. A project is a container for various analysis files. These include samples, which are fast queues that result from runs, and output files from running analyses. These are stored under app sessions. In contrast, a run in BaseBase corresponds to data from sequencing a single flow cell on an instrument. The project overview page contains a brief description of the data set. You can navigate around using the quick launch buttons, either using the buttons on the left tab, using the names, or the direct links. These all link to the same place. The collaborators button indicates who the run has been shared with. If you are the owner of a run or project, you can change the name and transfer runs or projects to collaborators. The share button allows you to share your projects. Note that we cannot share this project since we are not the project owner. You can also access the BaseBase blog from this page. The blog provides useful updates and information on BaseBase. There are three samples for this data set. HCC1187C is the cancer sample from the breast ductal carcinoma cell line. HCC1187BL is the matching lymphoblastoid cell line from the same individual representing a normal sample. HCC1187 somatic represents the subtracted data. The normal and tumor samples are compared and matching sequences removed, leaving only the tumor normal differences. Inside the sample's hyperlinks, you will find FASTQ files. These will usually be full FASTQ files, but in this case, empty FASTQ files were uploaded as placeholders. You will also find information about the samples, including the read length, the total number of reads, and whether this was a single read or paired end run. Inside the app sessions, there is a folder for each analysis performed. Here they are named Illumina's uploader as they were uploaded directly by Illumina. The naming convention should be more informative in the future, but here the sample names correspond to the app sessions, so you can use these sample names as a guide. Clicking on the hyperlinks will also show you the folder name. Inside the cancer and bloodline folders, you will find BAM files, VCF and genome VCF files, and there will usually be a summary report for the analysis. Inside the somatic folder are VCF files from the subtracted data. These show the variance between the tumor normal data. There is also the somatic summary report. You can open the somatic summary report within BaseBase or download it directly to your computer. Okay, so 
what I want you to do is once you are into your account, I hope everybody has a Basepace account and you are able to log into your Basepace account. Okay. Go to public data. And in publish in here search for true sight cancer. Yeah, go to public data here. True sight cancer. It's it's there on your screen. Okay, true sight. T R U S I G H T cancer. Now click on the second project that is the mini seek true sight cancer. So, do you have this mini seek true sight cancer project? You all saw that? Okay. Click on that. When you click on that, it will expand and you will see two options there. One is uh, run and there is project. What I want us to do is to import the project. So, click on import. So, when you click on import, uh, did you guys say import or shall I go back? Yeah, everybody with me so far? Okay. So, when you click on import, you will get this pop up that says, you know, I want to share a project with you, accept it. So, once you accept it, you should see it in your notifications that you now have this project mini seek true sight cancer. So, what I want you to do is click on that, you know, click on this notification that says mini seek true sight cancer. So, click just click on that. Once you do, go to the samples tab. There is a tab here that says samples, go to the samples tab. Now, let us take one of the samples, this guy, the second last one which says HD 701 rep 1. So, these are, this is a reference sample uh, from Horizon. Uh, it is a company that provides reference uh, RNA, DNA samples so that you can check uh, the quality of the data, quality of the panels that you have developed and so on and so forth. So, it is essentially QC data, right, but it is very easy to look at, uh, which is why I wanted to show this to you. So, you select this and what do you do? You should be able to copy, yeah. So, do copy and do you guys have any projects? No, okay. So, sorry, my bad, I missed a step. Uh, Let us exit this, cancel, let us cancel this, okay. Go, ba go back to projects, go back to projects, okay. Let us exit that for a moment, go back to projects. Is everybody in projects? Yeah, so just create a project, you know, name it whatever you guys want to name it. I am just going to call this IITB demo, very creative. So, you can name the project whichever way you want. So, it will create a project. Do you now have a project? Yes. Okay. Now, let us go back to the uh, dashboard. Let us go back to the dashboard now. Again click on the mini seek true sight cancer project. Go to samples. Lost? Sorry, okay, I will go step by step. So, you created a project? No. So, okay. Do you see this projects here? Yeah. So if you click on that, there is a uh, like a file icon which says new project. Okay. So, click on that and give a name to the project. Everybody has created the projects? Yeah. Okay. So, let us go back to the dashboard into the true sight cancer 
project, go to samples. Okay, and go to this HD 701 rep 1 that is the sample that we want to copy. So, if you uh, scroll to your right on the top there is something uh, that you see copy to that menu op option that says copy to. So, you can copy this now you should have a project the one that you just created and copy there. Okay, the reason we are doing this is I wanted to show you how data sharing works on base space right. Like I said this is not a very very critical uh, function in the application the only thing we wanted to show you is how you can share data across different users because this is meant to be a collaborative platform. If there are any public data sets that you want to analyze this is how you would import those data into your own workspace so that you can run your own analysis. Okay, that really was the crux and what I what else I wanted to show you was how to launch an app. Okay, so, let us say now I am just for the sake of time going to copy this one particular file onto the project that I have just created. Okay, now, let me go back to projects, let us go back to projects and in this whatever project that you have just created if you are able to copy the file, uh, copy that particular sample it should be there. Okay, I have I think I have copied it twice so you see it two times, uh, but if you have been able to create the project select the sample and copy it to the project that you created you should be able to see a sample in your project. Okay. So, what I wanted to show you now is launching an analysis once you have your data into base space how do you launch an analysis and I just said that there are multiple apps or applications that are available on base space. So, this particular data was generated for a panel known as a true sight cancer. Okay, this is a panel that is available from Illumina that is used yes. So, this data has been generated for a panel known as true sight cancer that is available from Illumina. It is a panel that is designed to detect germline mutations. Okay, so, what we are going to do now is once I select uh, the sample that I want to run the analysis for I am going to click on this launch app. Everybody or at least most of you uh, with me so far yeah you have a project, but those of you who can see this select the file and click on launch app. When you click on launch app the options that are available okay, let me just do this there are multiple apps that are available okay depending again on the analysis that you want to do okay because this is a cancer panel uh, that you know we have done enrichment on I can choose an enrichment app okay. Now, what this will do is you uh, know it will um, run uh, what is known as variant calling okay it will call mutations it will call uh, insertion small indels. Okay. And then I can select the enrichment app. So, what I did was I selected a file from my project, I clicked on launch app. From the launch app, I selected the enrichment app because the data that I am using uh, for the workshop today is from a cancer panel, true side cancer, and we want to run an app that will give me variant calls, you know, mutations and small insertion deletions. Okay. And these are again uh, you know third party apps see the whole idea behind base space is to make these apps which are traditionally you know developed as command line tools available to the end users. Because if they are in the command line form unless you know uh, if you are good if you are unless you are good at some level of uh, you know scripting it is hard for you to use them. And majority of the apps that are developed for NGS data analysis are command line apps because they are developed by advanced bioinformaticians. Okay. So, there is an analysis name you know which is the name that you want a unique name that you want to give to your analysis you know that is again your call. Uh, where do you want to save your results? So, you by default it will pick up the same project from which you have picked up the input data files. If you want to save it somewhere else you can do so 
uh, select samples. So, you can go to the project, select any sample that you want to run, select. Okay. Uh, if there are BAM files, so BAM files are nothing but uh, aligned data files okay, that are generated by aligners. So, you can select that reference genome that you want to use for your analysis because if you remember from the video I showed you once you generate the read data in order for you to do analysis you have to map it back to the reference genome right and in this case we are dealing with human genome data uh, not uh, unknown species. So, we will have a reference genome uh, against which we will map uh, the <coughs> our data files and you can also choose the targeted panel. So, that was used. So, in this case as I told you this is a true site cancer data right. So, what I will do is I will choose this true site cancer version 1 uh, region file. So, essentially this will define for the application what are the regions in which it should look for variant calls right. So, it will significantly shorten the time it takes for analysis otherwise the app may end up scanning the entire genome which may uh, result in two things one is extremely long analysis time and second some of these because we have repetitive regions in the genome homologous regions in the genome you know it you may end up with random alignments which will give you false. Uh, information right. So, the targeted uh, file the target files essentially help you in streamlining your analysis ok. And now, uh, let us hope that it works. So, I am just going to check that I have actually done everything that I am supposed to ok. I think there are more things for us to do. One second. Okay. If you continue scrolling down, you will see that there are certain other options. For example, whether this is for germline or for somatic. Uh, I, I told you earlier the true site cancer panel is meant for germline, okay, germline uh, variant detection. So, that is what I will use. We will we are going to really leave all the other parameters as default. Right. There are many many options because most of these algorithms come with multiple options that you can use to tweak the way the analysis is performed and the kind of results that are reported. We recommend for our new users basic users to use a default analysis as you become more comfortable with the data that you are handling you can play around with the uh, parameter options. And I am going to I think I have done everything yep. So, I am going to launch the application. So, when I do this what the application should do is take the input files that I have given and start running uh, the analysis. This analysis will take a little bit of time you will uh, get a small pop up accept it. Okay, now, you should have one more notification saying that you know you have accepted uh, data from one of my colleagues <coughs> and in that let us look at yeah, let us look at the first analysis. So, just click on it click on the first analysis you will see four analysis in the uh, you know once you put in that address. So, this is essentially going to be the output of the analysis that we just started ok. So, this is the output of the analysis that we just started ok. And what this is showing you is some metrics of the data that we have analyzed. So, you can see that for this particular sample more than 98 percent reads aligned back to the reference genome. Okay, again which means majority of the data is usable more than 98 percent of the data read data that was generated for this particular sample is mapping back to the reference genome which means it is usable. So, it gives you information like read, read level enrichment, base level enrichment, target level enrichment. So, these are all really uh, quality metrics that you want to use to make sure of two things one is that your read data is of high quality and b 
you have very very specific sequence data that has been generated in. So, if you see here the target level enrichment is close to 100 percent 99.77 percent which means that you have uh, the, se the sequences that you have are from your target region majority of the sequences that you have are from your target region. If this number is low which means that you have off target sequence data in your file. Okay. So, there may be something wrong with the way the data was generated, you know, there may be something wrong in the way the library was prepared and so on and so forth. So, you can use this to make sure that your, the, your workflow was uh, sort of you know, error free so to speak. What it will also give you is the number of SNVs structural variations. Okay. Oh, sorry, SNV is a single nucleotide variations or one base changes that were identified in this particular sample. Okay. It will also give you the number of indels that is insertions and deletions that were called in this particular sample. It gives you coverage summary. Uh, and also the depth of coverage in the targeted region. So, what you see here on the horizontal axis is the depth of sequencing coverage. So, I think Mukesh talked about the uh, X coverage, right. So, when you are doing next generation sequencing, you are actually sequencing just 2 minutes, you are sequencing every base multiple times, okay. And then depending on the application you are running, your depth of sequencing can be as low as 30 X. So, as Mukesh mentioned for whole genome sequencing, uh, we are really looking at 30 X sequencing. For, for somatic mutations, you may want to sequence as deep as 5000 X, 10000 X depending on the uh, frequency of the mutation, right. If it is a rare variant uh, and you know in cancer samples especially if it is a heterogeneous tissue sample, you may have to sequence deeply. Liquid biopsy is another example where you have to sequence deeply because you are really trying to identify those cancer uh, DNA uh, cell free or you know uh, CTCs in your uh, blood which will have you know DNA from your normal cells, right. So, the depth of sequencing in this case is very high and the median fragment length and so on and so forth. So, you are really getting a lot of uh, metrics. Uh, you can also actually somewhere uh, it is not shown here, but see the specific uh, mutations that are called. So, if you download some of this data, you will be able to actually see the specific variations that are called. You know we have looked at uh, NGS data generated on the Illumina platform, we have seen how we can share data amongst uh, you know our collaborators, run some analysis and looked at what the output uh, you know may look like depending on the application that uh, you have run. Uh, since you all now have base space accounts, uh, there are many public data sets that are available, right. So, if you go to the uh, public data section on base space, you will see that there are thousands of data sets that are available. So, you know you can uh, look at those at your free time and uh, you know reach out to us if you have any questions. Hope you guys found this session useful. Thank you. I hope today's session by Dr. Arti Desai was really informative, where you learned how base space can be used in sequencing analysis, data sharing and how data output looks like. She also showed that this platform is a collection of multiple applications and demonstrated you a single application that is variant calling. She gave a detailed information of parameters, launching of the app and how to run it. I suggest you to play with other applications available there and you will find them really interesting. And Dr. Desai also told you that you will learn more when you will play with the parameters of each application with new data set. I would like to mention you there are la large amount of data set available which is publicly accessible on various portals such as the Cancer Genome Atlas or TCGA 
and there are various ways one could download those data set and by using these tools try to understand and analyze the data. So, more and more you are playing with these tools and you are familiar with the software features, you can then make use of large amount of public accessible data set from various large genome sequencing projects. In the next supplementary lecture, we will learn about ion torrent, a benchtop next generation sequencing technology by Dr. Atima Agarwal. Thank you.